Yeah, we'll record it. And as always, we'll always post it up on the YouTube channels as well. Uh, if you wish to ask head coach Derek King a question for today's media session, use that raise your hand feature, Patrick and Scott. Coach, uh, a busy weekend, an exciting weekend for your Ice Songs. They get the two victories. And then yesterday, a whirlwind of transactions. You had guys going up to Chicago, guys going down to Indy. A new defenseman arrives in Cliff Watson. It seems like it's another day in the life this season for a coach like yourself. How are you handling it? And uh, now you want the wins to continue, but obviously adjustments have to be made. Yeah, we obviously we lost some good players and, uh, you know, good for them. They're going up there and uh, we bring in uh, Cliff Watson. I don't know much about him. I've heard some good things about him. He's played some uh, AHL games, which is good. Uh, we could use that. And then, uh, you know, the big thing here is just kind of re- re uh, sorting out the lines again and, and just getting uh, combinations together and, and you know how it is up and down guys are up and down guys are hurt so uh, right now touch wood we're pretty healthy and so we'll just maybe get some fresh bodies in next game yeah so I've had a lot of challenges so far this year one of them being transactions do you feel like the team might respond a little bit differently now that they know what it takes to overcome said challenges and, and come out with wins like you saw last weekend yeah, well, the, the biggest thing is we've talked to it uh, how many times have we done the media now, and it's the start of the game is important to us and the way we compete. These are things we can control. Um, you know, we, we can't uh, be worried about, oh, I got to get points or I got to get goals and who's going to be the hero. It's not that. We got to play a team game and stay with our structure, within our structure for uh, 60 minutes and at least give ourselves an opportunity to win. Do you feel like there might be a chip on the shoulder now with this group going into, say, Thursday against Grand Rapids and now three consecutive against Grand Rapids, considering the last time you saw them, uh, it was the Griffins that took advantage of, of this bunch? Yeah, um, you know, and, and the Griffins, they're a good uh, – Grand Rapids is a good hockey team. they got a pretty good lineup. But at least our guys know now uh, if we play a certain way, we have an opportunity to win hockey games. And we did that uh, against Iowa. Uh, over the weekend and we came out with wins so hopefully that just keeps snowballing into okay continue to build off of that and uh, we'll see how we do uh, come to GR on uh, Thursday. Scott Leber, sir your line is active. Hi coach uh, we know there's going to be a lot of shuffling between here and Chicago but with the taxi squad situation do you think every two weeks we're going to see this turnover because Guys who are on the taxi squad, the Blackhawks are going to want to get back into game experience, game shape, and it's just going to be back and forth like this every two weeks. Oh, I'm not sure if it's every two weeks, but I think if you if you're healthy, your big big club's healthy, and you have guys sitting around that could be down here maybe for a couple games on the weekend. Um, I think you might see some more transactions like that where guys come down, get a couple games in, and then go back up and just swap out some players. But uh, it's just everything's based on obviously uh, how healthy the, the big club is. But uh, I'm not against it. And I know Peary and Boquist and Johnson and Delia, they were only here for a week basically. But do you think just for the younger guys having that foursome here just in one week that, that something there could rub off a little bit and really help the young kids out? Yeah, I, I, you're, you're, you've nailed it. I think it's, it's great when those guys come down. Uh, they're, uh, you know, they've been in the pros before. They know what it takes. They, when they come here, they obviously they. Sometimes it's not fair for those guys because they haven't played in uh, a month. But uh, they got to get their game right, hone their game while they're here. But they just the way they prepare uh, on and off the ice for the game. That's what these kids need to see, and uh, you know they did a great job for us. So Patrick Williams, your line is active. Uh, yes, Coach. Uh, what kind of uh, growth have you seen from Nick Bodan? Uh, he was called up yesterday, obviously, but uh, had a re real nice weekend, uh, you know, against Iowa. Yeah. No, I mean, um, I, you know, I think it just, he's matured so much. Um, he's, he looks stronger, thicker uh, as a player. He hasn't changed the way he plays. He plays the same, but you just... It's more noticeable now, I think, just with the maturity levels up. He knows he's got a little taste of what it takes to stay up there. And when he is in the lineup, he knows what he has to do. Um, you can get away with that a little bit when you're down here because you might be the a power play guy here. 
and uh, play a ton of minutes here. And then when you go up there, you don't see power play and you don't get to play the minutes you do here. So you got to make adjustments quick. And he's done that. Uh, but the biggest thing for me is just his his strength and his uh, maturity has just been uh, off the charts compared to last year. How, do, how does a defenseman uh, who's going to play different minutes at different levels kind of manage that? Uh, because, you know, you have to kind of make every minute count if you're playing 15 as opposed to 25 where you might kind of pace yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, you know, that's, that's the coaching comes in, right? Those guys are in his ear and tell them, Hey, you, you're going to play this, this, and this, and you, you got to, but at that level, like it's uh, the thing we use a lot of top end with our team is the, the game's on the line every time you get over the board. So um, he's has to have that mentality like the rest of the players. Uh, so if it's a 30 second shift, he's got to go as hard as he can for 30 seconds and get off. And I think that's what he's figured out now. Like you said, he's not playing the 20 minutes where you can maybe pace yourself a couple because you're still tired from the last shift. He's just, he plays his shift for 30, 40 seconds and he gets off and he rests and now he knows he's going to get back out. And uh, I think he's done a great job. And uh, the coaching staff up there has been a great, did a great job with all these young guys managing their ice. And last thing, uh, 11 games in now, month in, uh, chance to take stock of the team. But where do you see your team at in general and the identity that's starting to form uh, after a month of, of play? Well, I think the identity that we should have, and I think they're starting to get it, is we're going to be a, a hard team to play against. We don't quit. We're relentless the whole game. I think, I still think we're not quite there where we're uh, – I see spurts of it where we're a team, like a team that's just gelled and they got each other's back. I think there's still a lot of guys because they're young. They're still trying to figure out where they belong here on this team. So, but we're close. Um, I know it's a 30 plus game season that that it, that's kind of you know hurts in a way. But you know these the guys and we've told them you got to figure this out a little quicker than usual. And I think they're doing that. Thank you. Scott Lever, your line is active. All right. So, Coach, the goaltender situation, Tompkins is back. I assume you're going to want to get him right back uh, out there uh, this week. And uh, kind of lost track of Scott Darling. Is he still uh, with the team? Is he still in the mix? And and Kale Morris, too. Is he still in the mix? Uh, Kale's, been, Kale's here. Uh, Auburn's is uh, down to play a couple games and be back up. And uh, Darling is no longer with us, so. Um, you know, he, he came in, did a great job for us. Uh, he's a pro and it was great having him around. It's just, you know, I think it was, it was easy for him to be here because he lives in Chicago. The, um, you know, the quarantine wasn't the same as if we were bringing a guy from, uh, wherever, anywhere out of state or anything like that. So, uh, but he did a fabulous job for us. He was great with our young guys. And, you know, it's always nice to have a guy like that around. It's just, uh, the way the season's going with this COVID, it was hard to keep them, especially when we have other goalies. So, but um, uh, Tompkins is, he's uh, got to play some games and then Kale's, he's deserved to play another game here soon. So we'll see him in the net. Excellent. Jay Tapp, did you want to jump in? Your line is active. You're muted on your side, Jay. <laughs> you're good. Oh, sorry, 2021. Um, I can read your lips, Jay. I know what you're asking. <laughs> I'm very animated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coach, just uh, if I missed this in the very beginning, I apologize. But what? Just give me an overall sense of where uh, where the the kind of mental makeup is with this group right now. What's kind of the attitude of this team in the locker room when you're off the ice? Well, they're, they're so much better uh, from at the start of the year. And, and like I was saying earlier, and I think it was Patrick that asked me there, um, it just where's our identity and, and where are we at? Um, I think our identity, they're starting to figure out what we need to, our identity is. It's, it's got to be a relentless team that just keeps coming and coming and coming. Uh, where the other team is just like, are these guys ever going to stop? And I think we're getting that because now we've done it for two games and we've had success. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure if we're still quite, we're not quite a team where 
uh, we've got each other's backs or we're getting there. I think we still have some guys that are still trying to feel, figure out where they belong on this team or what's their role, which is normal. And in a normal year, you have 70 plus games, 80 games, to, you know, and usually about 20 games into it, you're, you got your identity and your, your players know where they stand on your team, but we don't have that luxury. So they got to figure it out quick, but I think we're there. We're almost there where, okay, we know we how we have to play. Now let's cut, get each other's backs. I know what position I need to play, where I fit in, and let's go move forward now. With the way this season has been kind of shrunken into such a tight little window, do you kind of handle from now till the end? Is this the, the back stretch now? This isn't the grind anymore. Yeah, yeah. I know we got to. What have we played? 10 or 11 games now, and uh, you know, 15 game mark, we're halfway. So um, I think it's, yeah, it's a good point, but I still think we're in the grind. You know, uh, you're going to get the grind because it's it's still as if we're playing 80 games, right? So this is the, the grinding part right now. And it's almost like right before Christmas, you get your break and then you come back refreshed and now you got your second half or the all-star game, whatever you have. But that's the, the sad thing is we got to get these guys got to pick it up quick, learn quick. Uh, for the most part, I think we're doing a better job of it of late. Um, but, you know, we just got to stay with the process. So you do try and mirror a normal season a little bit. And, yeah, and you have to because it's it's not, you know, they know they have to learn some stuff quicker than uh, usual. But. Uh, the biggest thing for me is the compete level and being a team. I think we're almost there, which is huge because, and a lot of these guys are, uh, you know, it's almost like this is a training camp kind of for next year. They got to show what they can do and if they belong with us back next year, you know, and we, and the good thing is we get some young junior kids that probably wouldn't be here. They'd be playing junior hockey somewhere. Uh, we get to see them uh, and see where they're at and, uh, you know, and, you know, take it summer after the summer comes, we start normally, hopefully again, and we got a good read on who we have and it, and we got to jump on the, the season, if that makes sense. Yep, sure does. Thanks, Coach. Yep. We'll wrap up with Brandon Kane. Your line is active. Derek, I might have missed this earlier, but do you have any update on Chris and Tepley? Tepley looks good. He's ready to go, I think. He just needs to get his legs, get his win back. Uh, Chris B.A., you know what? I have to talk with uh, DJ Jones, our trainer, our medical trainer, to find out what's going on with him. Um, he's here. He's been working out. He hasn't been on the ice, but uh, uh, I'm not sure how far along he is. Uh, I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't right now about him. But Tepley's good. I think he's more Tepley's just getting his legs back and, and getting ready to – he's been doing – we've been doing a lot of battle drills with him. So there's where you're, you know, that's what he needs because uh, you can skate all summer, work out and do all your biking and that. But once you get in that first battle drill, that's when you know if you're in shape or not. So uh, he'll be ready to go here soon. And then in a, a regular season, you have moves coming whenever of guys going up and down. Is it easier roster management wise this year, knowing that when Chicago goes on the road, guys will come up and guys will go down. But when they're on the road, there's, these are your guys. Yeah, it's, it's, you can, yeah, it's a little easier, but I think the biggest thing is every time we watch, like we'll watch the Hawks game tonight and then um, you kind of, especially if they're at home, you kind of cringe if somebody blocks a shot or somebody goes down because you've already prepared your lineup for the, the next come up and coming game. And then you lose all a certain couple guys. But um, if to say it's easier, I don't know if it's easier. It's just, uh, you know, a little different. That's all. And then I know your role is more development wise, but uh, what was your thought on Brent Seabrook's career and then Patrick Kane hitting a thousand games tonight? Oh, I mean, those guys, you know, I never played against these guys. I was already done, but um, it's, you know, great hockey players. I mean, Patrick Kane speaks for himself. I mean, he just, he just, just gets better. I think he gets better every year as he gets older. And uh, Seabrook, uh, watching him and just meeting him over the years at camps and stuff, he's just a warrior. Um, huge part of those Hawks uh, Stanley Cups. And, uh, you know, as a, as a player, you never want to 
you know, you always hope you can end it, be healthy, and then, uh, you know, go off into the sunset uh, with no aches and pains. But, uh, you know, he's got a long life ahead of him. He's got a family, and uh, sometimes those decisions are not easy. But uh, all the respect in the world for that guy. Thanks. Excellent, Derek. That'll conclude our media session with you.